so we're here with Charles Hunt. Uh, hi, Charles. Hello. Uh, thanks for agreeing to the video uh, of this, all these devices. So uh, you are the proud owner of the Scorpio recorder. Uh, I am now. About, about to be. <laughs> um, and just to give you and everybody like a, a brief overview, yep. uh, you came to us um, because you wanted a way to do most of your work on your Cooper mixer. Yes. Um, but also be able to take advantage of all the extra inputs um, that the Scorpio has. Yes, I've, I've found that it's, a, it's, it's, it's an arms race these days, so you, you need more tracks. You may not want a different mixer, but you need more tracks. There's no getting around it anymore. That's right. <laughs> you know, I, I, is it fair to say that um, even though it's an arms race, um, that most of your like 80 20 like 80 percent of it is still done on the eight inputs of the cooper is that about right or yes no? yeah definitely yeah it, it just it, this will give me more chances more opportunities to do whatever i want to and just have sound sources in the, in a room on a set or on a location however i like as opposed to being hamstrung i mean once upon a time it was maybe four inputs or maybe six or seven inputs, and then eight, or maybe you could um, get a 108 plus one, put nine, but there's, there's no way, I mean, 12 seems, to, 10 seems to be like what you need to have, or 12 is good, and when I saw the, when I saw the Scorpio, I got very excited, because something of this size, and it was, 32 analog tracks, 32, was it 16 tracks? No, 16, 16 analog 16, 16 yeah. right, mic or line. And um, 32 with Dante? Well, or, and another 16 with Dante. Another 16 yeah. with Dante. And I was like, okay, well, that's, that seemed to make a great deal of sense. So I, I was looking forward to uh, getting it as, as soon as I was ready for it. I'm about to start a new project, so now I'm ready for it. Yeah. Uh, so part of this video will be uh, us going through the Scorpio, mm -hmm. and part of it will be how we integrated it into your rig. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think because the Scorpio having all those inputs is great, but if you can't use it seamlessly, then I think it's really, um, it's, yeah, it's not practical. Well, you don't want it to be a handicap. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's, so let's dive in. Yeah. Um, the, what we've kept for your setup is... The first eight inputs are exactly what you're used to. Okay. So you you always went into the Sound Devices 970. Yes. Um, and we'll do diagrams and stuff um, for you and for people mm -hmm. watching at home. Um, but you know, we basically just um, took your existing cable and we duplicated it and made it more Scorpio friendly. Okay. Um, so that means that. The direct outs come out of the Cooper, and that's by direct outs, I mean the DB25. Yes. Um, they go into the 970, and they Y out of uh, the 970 um, into the Scorpio. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, uh, there's some compromises in that, just as there was when you were using um, another sound device's recorder as a backup. Yes. Um, that eighth channel, because you're limited on the 970, um, to only eight analog inputs, mm -hmm. um, that eighth input doesn't actually exist on the 970 because you have your mix track for input one, and you have um, you know seven isolated, and that brings you to your eight total. Yes. So um, one of the compromises, the sacrifices that we made was that direct out of the eighth input on your Cooper goes only directly to the Scorpio. Okay. Um, and I'll show you uh, how to route it back from the Scorpio into the 970, so then everything has everything. But, you know, one of the design criteria that we have is, um, you know, any machine can die and it won't affect the other machine. So that's, that's why, good. yeah, I mean, that's why we really, we kept, to, and this was your design originally. Well, yeah, I definitely yeah, want to have that redundancy, yeah. yes, so that nothing is depending completely on something else. Now, that means that inputs 9 through 15, and I'll go into why it's only 9 through 15 in a second, mm -hmm. um, go directly into the Scorpio. Yes. And so from there, we take a submix of those inputs, and we bus it. We go bus into the Cooper. 
And by going bus into the Cooper, that means that the mix out of the Cooper now has a mix of all of the inputs. Right. Um, you and I have talked about this before, but I, you know mm -hmm. this is also I think helpful for me to say and for people to understand that we're really trying to keep your existing workflow completely intact. Right. So for eighty percent of that time on your shoot, when you're only dealing with inputs one to eight, you don't have to think about the extra stuff. Okay. Um, now I did say uh, nine through fifteen. That's because um, we take the mix out of the Cooper. And we go to input 16 of the Scorpio. Mm -hmm. um, we go to input 16 because in the Scorpio architecture, it's a little bit easier to take up that analog, that dedicated analog input. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we can route it to a bus, and then from the bus, we can route it to a physical output. And there's opportunities to adjust the level to make sure right. we're at Unity Game. We saw that a little right. earlier. You know, Patrick, uh, who uh, we, works here, he uh, rightly suggested that we could have gone in through one of the camera returns. Um, and that's another way to skin that cat. So okay. if you ever are like, you know, I really want to have 16 inputs, um, and I'm fine with keeping everything at Unity anyways, mm -hmm. um, you know, we could rewire that cable. Okay. Um, so that's, you know, that's the kind of signal flow in, an, in a nutshell. Um, and so the, the real, I think, um, you know, kind of magic of it is, like, w uh, my vision uh, for this and what we've talked about is uh, if we could make a set of sliders right. so that, like, up oh, there's that ninth input that I need, um, time to slide out the icon control surface. Right. Um, like, literally, it can stay hidden until, <laughs> until it's needed. Right, until and that's a nine, big, 9 through 16 are needed. And that's a big deal. And when they're needed, they're needed quick. You know, it's yeah. like, I don't know who's going to, you know, like how many conversations I had with the director. I don't know who's going to talk or right. everybody might talk or, you know, suddenly. You, Somebody might say something. Right. <laughs> I don't know who, so we'll yeah, wire right. everybody. Exactly. Yeah, right. Um, so, you know, the first thing I wanted, I want you to feel comfortable with is that the Cooper is behaving like the Cooper. Right. And it's going to the places that we want it to go, go to. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we've hooked up a, a mic into input one to kind of simulate a boom mic. And yeah, it, it, it should normally be, uh, it should feed everywhere you want it to feed. Right. Um, including, you know, uh, like you can route things to your uh, boom operators. You can, um, you know, wh whatever, whatever normally flows into the Cooper should flow in. And then this one is wired directly into input uh, nine of the Scorpio. Yes. Um, Which also winds up, uh, gets routed to the left track. Uh, cor uh, correct. correct. Yeah. So the the way that these buses work, um, the, or the way we've configured them, is uh, nine through uh, fifteen mm -hmm. uh, gets routed to buses one and two. Mm -hmm. um, buses one and two come out of physical outputs um, aux seven and eight, right. and that goes into your bus uh, A and B yes. onto here. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's dive in. All right. um, you know, the Cooper is the Cooper. Um, that's, that's all normal. Um, now we get into um, stuff where it's uh, nine, th where you need extra inputs. Um, so the first thing you'll notice on the control surface when you first power it on um, is that it powers on as if you were, um, you know, controlling channels one to eight. Mm -hmm. um, you're not controlling channels one to eight. In fact, we've rigged this up. Um, we've told, we've deliberately um, made everything uh, pre-fader so that this has no, this doesn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so for you to get to the inputs that you'll need after you power on, you have to use this bank right. button to bank over to, to 9 to 16. And so now you're looking at um, 9 to 16. Right. Uh, now the other things uh, that we have on the table, we've hooked up a tablet mm -hmm. into this, which is an Android uh, tablet. Yes. Uh, Hardwired. And um, we have a little remote role interface for the Scorpio. Yep. Um, so again, you know, like uh, you can fade channel nine down. Right. Um, and yeah, as you fade it down, um, you'll notice that it's still pre-fade in uh, on your um, 970. Right in the ISO. And um, oh, by the way, we're in a weird meter um, here. You probably change this so we can see those. Yeah, so um, we can choose to see meters. Maybe 1 through 16? Left, right, 1 to 16. There we go. Yep. And you can see it's pre-fade there. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, here, if you fade down input 1 on the Cooper, 
right. um, you'll see there's nothing in the mix now. Yes. Um, fade up channel nine. Yes. And there, channel nine. Back into the mix. Yep, is going into the mix. Yep. Um, and we're still, you know, all the pre-fader no. stuff is happening. Want to come back up and back into the mix. Yep. And similarly, if I fade nine down, we're still into the mix. Still from, into the mix on number one. Yeah. Um, so the the routing is correct. Uh, before the video, um, we had set made sure everything was at unity gain. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, we landed at zero, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, there is a, you know, to get into the bus of the Cooper, you have to add resistors into the cable. And so that's another opportunity to change gain. But it looks like if everything is at zero, those resistor values um, are nailed. And we'll publish all of the cables and everything that we did here. All right. Um, so that people know. Um, all right. And so. You know, there's so many different ways to sort of interact with this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the first thing, since we're since the Scorpio is new to you, is I'd like you to think of the five things that you need to do um, to get a recorder going at the beginning of your day. Like, what's your routine? You land. What's next? Land, put the CF or SD cards in. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean, maybe on the first day I may ID it, and then that's pretty much it because it's not going to change. <laughs> I'm not going to change it, but I'm not going to, you right. know, I mean, minus 20 is minus 20 right. and uh, things of that nature. Put in the information for the um, for the next scene up. Uh, so time code, set set the next scene up. Um, make sure that the tracks um, that you want are armed. Um, right. So, like, for example, if you aren't doing tracks 9 through 16, um, you know, you can and shut them down. So just save room on the save save room on the uh, on the card or the internal drive. Or yep. And so like um, yeah, you can do it here oh. on the control surface. So that yes. And so now we're unarming tracks. All right. Um, by the way, one feature I read about in the Scorpio. All right. You can you can arm uh, while you're recording on the fly. Yeah, I haven't actually which is, tried which it. Which I've never heard of any other machine that can do that. Right. Which and is amazing. It's come up a lot. Yeah, it comes up. Um, you know, you can also rotate around here and then do the double tap to arm and disarm tracks that way. Okay. Um, but, you know, frankly, I think that um, what you'll find is that there's um, uh, a, some things are easier uh, to do on the control surface. Okay. Um, yeah. I want to get into this. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> let's do it. Um, so home, that way, oh, screen. so you could, oh, so you could access one through eight mm -hmm. or that. Or, well, that's that's sweet. Yep. Um, and yeah, there's your take list. So, for example, um, you know, like a simple thing is, uh, I wanted to rename track sixteen, so you knew it was something special, right? Because mm -hmm. that's where the mix from the Cooper is coming from. Um, as long as that's on channel names and not channel mutes. I can just go in and type in a new, um, you know, new track name, and that goes for any of the, um, you know, any of the characters that you okay. need to add. So, like, um, it just says Coop because you've only got so many characters to work with. Uh, no, let me show you. Uh, there's there's a clever bit of programming on Sound Devices part. If I do Cooper mix, they say we don't recognize that. No, uh, you can see they've. Here. I'll oh, I see. That up. Okay. They've taken out all the vowels. Gotcha. So, anyways. Hmm. Um, I'll maybe I'll just leave that Cooper. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. It's a bold choice. Um, notice it's not. Um, you know, it's never going to be armed, right? Because what we've, you know, one thing we've done is it was really important for us to wrap our heads around that the inputs are the inputs that they all line up correctly mm -hmm. so that when you flip to 9 to 16 that truly is inputs 9 to 16 so the reason we we went through the hoops of going in through an input and then to a bus is so that we can end up on the left right bus right and that's where the mix lives so as far as post is concerned it's all um, you know it's all normal and, right. and as far and as they'll, we're ne they'll never see this right they'll never see this and as far as we're concerned um, you know, it's all normalized for us too. Yes. So, you know, for me, it, uh, like the digital kind of revolution lets you anything be anywhere. Right. But it's really important to maintain a one-to-one -one relationship for as long as you can. Yeah. So that's what this allows us to do. 
we flip it. We literally just sort of flip it into the left right bus. <laughs> um, but that means, you know, it'll never be armed. Um, yeah, and uh, I find this a much more helpful way of, um, you know, entering in scene and take information. Okay. Um, you know, it's always here, and then you have all your reports here. Um, you know, so you can, you know, do a report right from here. Oh. Um, you know, for years I've used the CL Wi-Fi, and um, it's so nice being having a hardwired connection. Hmm. Um, you know, there's a little bit of funny business, like when you first plug it in, you have to tell it to be USB MIDI. The app actually sort of guides you through how to do okay. that. Um, but it's what you gain is a completely reliable okay. signal. So. Something else to play with uh, over the weekend, or actually for the rest of the week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you can, obviously, you can record from here. Um, yeah, so let's... Where's that? To hit record. Hit it. Right there? Yeah. Now... This guy? Yep. Sweet. All right. So now, this off. is one way. Um, so, uh, meaning it's only going to record, it's only going to kick the Scorpio into record. Right. If you want to kick both machines automatically, um, we wired it up to your roll two. Oh, that does both? Yeah. That, oh, sweet. Well, okay. Well, yeah. So I don't have to do individual. <laughs> yep. That's what I've been doing. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize you were doing it. Uh, yeah. Um, that would have been easier to wire. No worries. <laughs> that's all right. Uh, no, that's fine. Um, it's, it's great. It's great to good. know. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, so just to geek out for a second, mm -hmm. um, we're picking up the, um, uh, this, the record and stop signals on uh, this little, um, it's called a Teensy. Uh, yes. And then we're sending out uh, the MIDI record command um, to here. Oh, I see. So, the 970, so this, this is going through that or something? Uh, it's actually going into this USB hub here. All right. So this will have to tuck away somewhere in your cart. Okay. Um, so yeah, the three things we have um, plugged in. Um, one is the remote roll device. Two is the uh, control surface. And three is the tablet. Okay. Um, but this was literally the cheapest hub we could find. What and is that? Get, like it's AC powered or something? Uh, right now it's on AC power. It's 5 volt. We can wire this into your, um, uh, if you have like a PSC Power Star yeah. or a Mio. Yeah, why don't we do that? Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, and then there's a third way of interacting, which is you can actually um, set buttons up, either on the control surface or here or both. Um, and, um, you know, have it be uh, uh, sort of quick access to it. So, like, if this sits on your cart somewhere, um, if you go into the menu mm -hmm. on, on your Scorpio, yeah. and you scroll down to control surfaces. Uh, controllers? Yep. Yeah. And then mapping. Yes. Let's say you want this button to do something really important. What's okay. the like? What's the most important thing you do all the time that that makes sense to do? Well, since I'm going to be recording with between either this or that, I would say um, write down you know scene number information. Okay. So um, if you go to uh, learn, yes, and now you have all these options. So scene name scene. edit. Uh, scroll Hold up. up. There you go. Oh. And now hit menu to so back out to the home screen, kind of simulate. All right. Viewer. Okay. Now push that button. So there we are. Right. And you can right. also edit it on there. All too. right. Yeah. Um, so that's another place. Um, you know, I was fooling around. We know what bank does, right? Yes. This. Yes. But these, um, that's interesting. So these are mapped. You see how that's changing? These are mapped already to somewhere. Okay. Um, to, if what? you want to, like, if you use this to talk to people, yes, you can map these commands. Okay. Um, but visually, for me, since these are left and the, this yeah. is pointing to the right, um, why don't we go ahead and map this one to be false take? All right. And you can also map one of these as well if you want to be okay. false take. Like it, it can do either or and both. Um, and why don't we do um, increment scene there? Okay. You know, and we can also sense. map those if you want. But so, so that's the kind of thinking that I think um, you know we should do here. Uh, like so basically, it, this is like a kind of a menu control since there's not really one here, kind of sort of. Yeah, I mean, there's enough buttons where you can kind of get by. You may not need this. No, um, this this literally I'm not uh, that. I mean, came along for the ride. If not, then that's what I'm saying. So I'm saying, if not, with, if not for that, how would you? 
you would assign yeah, information I mean, to these handful of buttons? Yeah, I mean, you can see, um, like we, we were fooling around before, mm -hmm. um, you know, if, to, to get to the bus outputs, you go to, you hit the read button. Right. These are all changeable. Mm -hmm. um, these are your aux levels. Um, so, yeah, like aux 9 and 10, again, is another place, mm -hmm. 7 and 8, are other places where we can change the level going gotcha. into the mixer. Mm -hmm. um, it's all 0 dB, which is I like right now, because we're happy. Um, but yeah, um, you can make these buttons do other things. Obviously, some of them are fixed, you know, like record is fixed. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, bank is fixed. These, the channel ones I like because they're visual. But anyways, uh, you know, so you can go crazy, um, you know, thinking about how you really want to customize all the stuff you need to get to in a hurry on this, and you have a tablet. Mm -hmm. All right, now we have a big topic to discuss. Okay. Uh, when you're mixing on inputs one to eight, yes. tell me what you're thinking about changing. What are you changing when you're mixing? What I'm changing when I'm mixing? Mm -hmm. um, well, I may be changing the EQ, I may be changing the trim, mm -hmm. I may be checking to see if I, if, um, if I need to uh, change the, um, the phase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are pretty much basic things. Um, everything else is pretty much set, private lines are set. Right. Things of that nature. Uh, agreed. So we got we to gotta map what you're used to on the Cooper mm -hmm. to inputs 9 to 15 on your control surface. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's say you want to change something about input nine. So yes. first of all, there's a tr there's a gain knob for every input. That's huge, right? So if nine is over modulating, you can change. So those it right. are my trim pots. Yep, these are your trims. Okay. Um, and you can see on the display it changes, right? But let's say you want to dig a little deeper. So you hit the select button. Okay. Uh, this is what's called fat channel mode. Okay. Um, so this uh, now suddenly makes the whole display. Um, you know, be all about that channel. So it gives you your source, your delay. Um, these correspond to these um, V pots, I think they're called in, in MIDI, you know, in controller land. Um, so that's saying that mic, that uh, microphone number nine? Yeah. Uh, well, M9. so the source is yeah. mic nine. Mic nine. So, okay. uh, and it's funny. I'm because, it doesn't say channel nine. <laughs> well, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's it like should it's a sound say source. It could M. be, yeah. Yeah. There's, you don't know if it's a microphone or a line level right. or anything else. Right. And in fact, uh, you can see your display flips over to that. And it can be mic or line. Like, I can make that be. Uh, oh, I see. It's, it's because yeah. it's of mic level. That's right, why. Exactly. Okay, okay. I see. Um, delay. The limiter is interesting. And I mentioned when I was sort of checking levels before, I was like, oh my God, none, nothing is happening. And that's because I had the limiter on. <laughs> um, so the limiter is good. Um, you know, it just, you, 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 it's like any limiter. Um, what's a little bit dangerous here is, um, you know, I think on a traditional mixer, you you can see it at a glance. Here, it's not so obvious, and it it's especially dangerous if it ever pops on on your mix track because huh. you don't want a limit of the limiter. Right. Um, so just be aware that that's where that's controlled. You notice that the EQ, including the high pass, defaults to off, huh. and to make that not be, um, you know. To make that active, you have to push in on the V-pot, okay. um, and then you can make your changes. Similarly, you have a whole bunch of choices here. So the high pass is, oh right, it's at, oh you're setting it, you can set it at whatever level you like. Yeah, you okay. can set it, but you know, if it's, you know, I've gotten caught in this where I'm like, yeah, I'm going to really set it, and you can, if it's off, you'll never hear the difference. Right. Um, so anyways. Uh, you know, I don't know what your what where you set stuff, but yeah. that's uh, that's that. Um, so let's wrap this up. Sure. Uh, I mean, I think there's going to be a I'm lot. I'm going to be playing. playing with this for the next couple of days. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people who want to, you know, um, have access to a lot of tracks. So the options are there's this, there's Xcom, mm -hmm. and then you get into you know giant mixers. Right, people are <laughs> using Allen and Heath. You're getting the giant yeah. mixing boards, yeah. Allen and Heath, and then, well, with the Allen and Heath, I'm sure it's great, I haven't worked with it, but you have to reconfigure the whole footprint of your cart. Yeah, and it's AC only. I mean, I think this, yeah. this offers a, um, the promise of having a very compact footprint. Mm -hmm. In terms of the options out there, this is incredibly flexible. Mm -hmm. And keeps you focused. If you never have to deal with this, if you don't go beyond eight, 
um, you know, right. you can, um, yeah, you're incredibly focused. Oh, well, if I go beyond it, I start, you know, paying, paying closer attention to this. Yeah. <laughs> this is the kind of hybrid between, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the smaller rigs and the larger stuff that you were talking about. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, this all, this, hey, at least I mean, this runs on 12 volts. Yes, which is really important. And for 80% of what you need to do, it stays out of the way. Yes. Well, that's good. Yes, this can get stacked and um, take up about this much space, which is great. Yeah. All right. Um, so uh, thank you, Charles, for agreeing to this. And this sure. is like a well, thank very you. public, um, uh, yeah, I don't know what this <laughs> was, but thanks for watching. Um, we'll post documents and signal flow diagrams, and um, you know this will be open source, so if somebody wants to fool around with this, they can. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.